test one, two, three. I would like to welcome those who are watching on YouTube. We are right now September the 25th. I think it is our third session. I'm not quite sure. I think it is the third time. Am I right, yes. Debbie? Good. Good stuff. Thank you so much and carry on following online and so on. So before I move on with you, I would like to make a concise review of what we have done basically under uh, at the bottom of your page one, Roman numeral three, and dependent of the Judean church. That's where I left you last week. We are in the major argument of the book, capital A, the biographical argument, an independent revelation. What, I, what we mean when we meant basically by an independent revelation is the fact that Paul never got this revelation about his apostleship and the gospel from man. He got it from the way to Damascus and so on. And what is very important to understand here for us, it's the gospel that uh, Paul is preaching, is the gospel that is valid today. And I'm asking you, it's going to be repetitious probably until the very end of the epistle, that it is by grace, true faith alone, plus nothing. Because even nowadays, there are people that are basically adding slightly to it, and it leads the people astray, and it creates fear and also frustration, such as the speaking in tongues, not baptized, telling you that you have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit, and so on. These things are improper to teach. They add to the gospel. This is false teaching, and sometimes we are shy to call it what it is. Because the reason if you stand save having a relationship with Christ here, it's given to you by grace, true faith alone, plus nothing else. The plus are not unto justification. Becoming a, a member, and not necessarily on paper, in a church, it's absolutely the will of God. Uh, to study the Bible, it's absolutely the, the will of God. To get water baptized, it's one of the command uh, ordinance of the church. But that does not add anything to your salvation or subtract the justification, meaning when you become saved, there is no addition to it. It's by grace, through faith alone. So that's what I meant by that we became um, independent revelation, whilst I'll pray in a moment. Two other words for another of the same kind, an hetero, another of a different kind. So what the Judaizer behind me are preaching to the people is a different gospel. It's not the same gospel, which is basically a false one. They teach last week perfection in the flesh, obligatory observances like Sabbath and so on. Mandatory circumcision, of course, for the male party on lo on lo uh, only, but I will elaborate on that today a little bit. Justification by the law. Paul, nothing predisposed, as we have seen last week, nothing predisposed Paul to accept the gospel. He was basically... Um, persecuting the church and so on, and um, he went to Arabia and so on and so forth, and I don't have any additional slides, so not today because I found nothing that is helpful. We just need to make your notes and so on, so I'm going to leave it there for now for the rest of the uh, session. Let us take a few seconds of silent time, and we open up with a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you once again to be able to gather in a healthy way, in the realm of the physical healthiness and in the realm of the spiritual also. Just the fact that the people in front of me are willing to commit distances for some to come and study the Word, that's great for me, for the ministry that we do together to see people committed to learn the word in a time difficult out there. So, Father, help us today, right now, at this very moment, to shovel aside anything that bothers us in the, in the life, financial, whatever, name it, 
to commit that style of worship for you for the next uh, 70 or 80 minutes. We give you thanks, dear Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Beautiful. So we went there that uh, finished in verse 21 of the book of Galatian. I'm not even in the book of Galatian right now, so pretty good, eh? Right on in verse 21 of chapter 21, where we, he went to Syria and uh, Cilicia, and he will be there basically for 10 years or maybe a little bit more. And in verse 22 to 24, when he says, I was still unknown by sight to the churches of Judea, which were in Christ, but only kept, they kept hearing, he who once persecuted us is now preaching the faith. I asked you last week to circle the faith, which once tried to destroy, it, and they will glorify me in my name. So the faith, it's a, a very nice name here, which becomes synonyms of the gospel, okay? In the early church, in the first century of the church, which we, what we call the apostolic age, all right? It was good, I finished with that statement, it was good for Paul to receive an independent gospel, not to be necessarily independent, but it's good for him since he is and will become, and he is now the apostle of the Gentiles, now in our book. Now it's new. It's new to you, so make, uh, make your eyes ready. Chapter 2, verses 1 and 10. We are at the bottom of your page 1. That's what we study right now, chapter 2, verses 1 and 10. No, no, we did not do that. We need to do. I guess we lost on the, on the verses you were saying. Uh, it could be. No, we basically we haven't embarked at all in chapter two. We're, we're starting here. Okay, we had started number three. Okay, that one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Number three. It's 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 um, number three. Oh, we started it. Yeah. No. 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 Okay. That's where we are today. No, that's okay. That's, I'm glad you asked. You need to be on the same page. I don't think together. Oh, uh, maybe we started it. No. Nope. No way. Eh? We did not start it. Okay. So now we start number three, independent of the Judaizer, chapter two, verses one to ten. This is our third point. Okay. Third point under capital A on your outlines. Third point under capital A on under your main outline. Okay, come with me. We read 10 verses and then we come. It's going to be good to be reacquainted to the text so you will now clue in that you have not done this. Yeah. Then after an interval of 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, taking Titus along with me. You circle taking Titus. Very important. It was because, and it was because of a revelation, circle revelation, that I went up. And I submitted to them the gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, that I did so in private, circle in private, to those who were of reputation, for fear that I might be running, uh, that I might be running or had run in vain. But not even Titus, circle Titus again, who was with me, though he was a Greek, circle Greek, was compelled to be circumcised, circle to be circumcised. But it was because of the false brethren, circle false brethren, secretly brought in, who had sneak in to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, in order to bring us into bondage, circle to bring us into bondage. But we did not yield in subjection to them for even an hour, so that the truth of the gospel would remain with you. Circle the truth of the gospel would remain with you. But from those who were of high reputation, circle high reputation, what they were makes no difference to me. God shows no partiality. Well, those who were of reputation contributed nothing to me. But on the contrary, seeing that I had been entrusted with the gospel to the uncircumcised, circle uncircumcised, just as Peter had been to the circumcised. For he who effectually worked for Peter in his apostleship to, be, to the circumcised effectively worked for me also to the Gentiles. Uh, 
And recognizing the grace that had been given to me, James, circle James, circle Cephas, and John, who were reputed to be pillars, gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship, so that we might go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. Circle circumcised again. They only ask us to remember, to remember the poor, the very thing I also was eager to do. Now you can draw a pencil line be, 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 uh, just below the verse 10. That's how, divide the, that's how we divide the text. We start the exposition. That's the third point of your outline. Right behind me on the board. A gospel that he received independent from the Judaizer. We are still under his biographical argument. Paul returned to Jerusalem only after 14 years from, Sy from Syria and Cilicia. So basically you can make a note that between chapter 1 and chapter 2, 14 years did elapse. Fourteen years did elapse. Do you remember a message that I did in the church here one Thursday night months ago when I taught about Paul being caught up in the third heaven and receiving revelation? Do you remember that? It was most likely during that period of time that it did occur to him. During that 14 years that he was caught up in the third heaven, reference to this, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 onward. FF, following verses. And the occasion of the return for Paul right now to Jerusalem, the occasion of it, is the famous church consul. Church Council, C-I-L, C-O-U-N-C-I-L, the Church Council of Acts chapter 15. That's what we call the Church Council, Acts chapter 15, verses 1 to 4. And the Church Council occurred after the first missionary journey because the first missionary journey was in Acts chapter 13 verse 114 to 28 he planted that church of Galatia at that time and now the church of Galatia or the churches of Galatia were already contaminated with false teaching so that's why he goes back to the Jerusalem to participate in the church councils with the head, the people of high reputation. I'll come back to that later. The um, first missionary was, uh, journey was Acts 13. Act, it's right here, dear sister. Oh, uh, no, that's great. You just uh, have a peek there. Okay. So when you look, I'm, la I'm glad you asked, because when you look at this, he went, okay, I'm showing the map right now, not the map, the, 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 the PowerPoint. So he needs right here in between before going back to settle the issue of the Judaizer. Does it make sense? Yes. Before he goes back to a second missionary journey, that's why the beginning of Acts chapter 15, it's in Jerusalem to set up the issue of circumcision and to set up the issue of adding to the gospel of the Lord. Makes sense. Historically speaking. Okay. Now concerning verse 1. Circle Titus. I'm going to read verse 1 again for you. Titus. Then after an interval of 14 years. I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas. Taking Titus along also. Circle this. Now here are Mr. Titus will serve into the Jerusalem Council as a test case. 
as a test case. That's why he took Titus along. Because Titus will serve as a test case in the fact that he is a Gentile believer who was saved apart from, say the word, circumcision. That's why he took Titus along with him to make a point to the Judaizer. It's a test case. Simply, I repeat, the time is on our side, no need to go fast. It takes Titus, because Titus is a Greek, doesn't have any Jewish blood. And Titus is a great example of a person like you and I that was saved for eternity apart from the Mosaic law, apart from work, apart from circumcision. And Paul knew that it would be a challenge to the Judaizer. It would be a challenge to the Judaizer because, do you see the importance of it right now? If it is yes, that Titus has to be circumcised to be saved, male here, I'm talking to you, if you're not circumcised, you're not saved. So in church history, the Galatian epistle is of a great price. Okay? If Titus ended up with the church council of Jerusalem, the church fathers, John, James, and Peter were still alive there. I will come back to this. And they say, Titus, want to be saved? Circumcision. If you're not here, some male, you need to do it. Because the gospel does not change. Doesn't matter Canada, United States, Japan, Australia, or the Fuji Islands, that's the same thing. The thing to note here, make a note very carefully here. The issue is not concerning Jewish believers. Make a note of that. The issue of Galatian right now is not concerning Jewish believers but for Gentile believers. The issue to note at this point is what Paul deals in the immediate primary context of the Galatian epistle is not something necessarily that deals with the Jewish people believer. It deals with Francois, Ernie, John, we're not Jews. It deals with Gentile believer. The issue of the Jewish believer, it's a different category than here right now. Just make your notes. We're building a case together. Now we carry on with verses 2 and 3. Come with me. It was because of a revelation that I went up. You always go up to Jerusalem. Went up where? To Jerusalem. And I submitted them uh, to them the gospel which I preach among the Gentiles. But I did so in private to those who were of reputation for fear that I might be running or had run in vain. But not even Titus, who were with me, though he was a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. The revelation of chapter 2 here, when I ask you to circle revelation, how it came to Paul is impossible to know. Direct revelation, another man might have told him, we don't know. It's impossible to know how he got the revelation to go. Probably on his own drive or whatever, but we do not know. Could have, it could have come directly to him, a voice or whatever, but there is no way to know. But we know one thing. We know one thing. Paul was a prophet. So a prophet receives direct revelation from God. That's the basic, very basic meaning of what is a prophet. It's a person that receives direct revelation from God. Direct. Reference to that. 
just make the reference. It's in the book of Ephesians, which we will do. Ephesians 2.20. We will do it after Galatian. It says this, having been built on the foundation of the apostles, which he was, and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. So Paul was an apostle and he was a prophet. So despite the fact that we don't know how he received the call to go there, it's not the point. The point he is a prophet and he was told to go. Verse 2c, I preach among the Gentiles, but I did, I did it so in private to those who were of reputation. What it does not mean here, it does not mean that Paul wasn't sure about the gospel that he was preaching. That's not what it means. It doesn't mean that Paul was not sure of his gospel and he sought approval. He doesn't go to Jerusalem for this to make sure that he was right. It's not the reason here that he consulted basically in private to those of were, who were of reputation for fear that I might be running or had run in vain. It's not the meaning that he was not quite sure about his gospel here. The reason is the, the, the fear that he might be running in vain. And when he says the fear that I had might be running in vain, that was his concern here. It was his concern to him and to the other apostles to shut the mouth or the mouths of the Judaizer. That's what is in concern. He was afraid to have run in vain. And for Paul, it was very important to be in good terms with the churches in Jerusalem and the pillars of the faith there. Paul always showed an extreme concern for his beloved, always. When he was losing somebody going back into the world, he basically was very choked by this in his heart and so on. Because he knew that the Judaizer, the false teachers, were basically drawing, upsetting the people. I have seen, it's a personal thought right now, people, years ago, I was doing the life of the Messiah here in Duncan. No need to mention the church because you know which one if you research a little bit. And I have lost people after the entire life of Christ with me that went to the seven days Adventist. How do you think it made me feel, oh, good for you if you're comfortable there? People having done the entire life of the Messiah, returning to yoke of slavery, you keep the Sabbath, do this, do that. Unbelievable. So that's the same issue with Paul here having preached to his people a gospel of liberty, not a, yoke of, not a yoke of slavery. He lost his people in Galatians that he did during the first missionary journey. Ah, oh, we need to be circumcised. Ah, oh, we need to keep the, the, the law. We need to keep the New Moons Festival, and so on and so forth. Paul said, what's going on here? Do you remember chapter 1, verse 6 here of Galatians? Go back quickly. I am amazed that you are so quickly deserting call you. Are you so foolish? Uh, where does it say the word foolish here? Anyway. Okay. You Galatians type of thing. Having started in the spirit, are you going to finish in the flesh? So he was concerned here about the validity and the practic practicability of his gospel. The liability of it. That's why he went to Jerusalem. Number three, verse three. But not even Titus who was with me, though he was a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. 
I repeat again, once again, that Titus is a test case here. And being Gentile, he, Titus, never felt compelled to be circumcised. But now you can raise your hand if you are well acquainted with Acts and so on. Okay, Titus never felt led to be circumcised. Turn with me without losing your page right now. Put a little, a, a little signal in your page. Go to Acts 16 for a quick moment with me. I just need to explain something to you. I'll do my best to convey this. Go to Acts 16. And remember what I said a few moments ago, that Gentiles evangelism and Gentiles believer, it's a different case than the Jewish believer. That's why I just want to show you that right now. You go to Acts 16, verses 1, 2, and 3. You never heard, probably, what I'm going to be teaching right now. Just need to know that to divide your scriptures properly. Paul came also to Derbe and to Lystra, and a disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. And he was well spoken of by the brothers who were at Lystra and Iconium. Paul wanted this man to go with him, and he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in those parts, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. Okay? Here, Timothy makes a choice that he has the right to make today. He chose to identify himself with his mother, who was a Jew. Paul will circumcise Timothy so that Timothy will not be a stumbling block to the Jews. Why? Because Paul, in all his missionary journeys, always went to the Jews first. Now, why did Paul why did Paul circumcise Timothy? Because he identified as a Jew. That's it. But, uh, but why did he do that? He did, have, he did this because of what we call the Abrahamic covenant. Because circumcision in chapter 12 of Genesis is not the Mosaic law. The law of Moses, when Abraham got circumcised, was not even yet given. So to be circumcised under the Abrahamic covenant is a sign of Jewishness. But when you are circumcised under the Mosaic law, it's a sign of submission. To the law. Not for the child. He's eight, day old. He's eight days old. The child cannot at eight days old decide, I'm submitting myself to the law. Circumcise me, mom. It's a sign of submission to the law for the parents. But now, Paul doesn't want to circumcise Titus because the law is no longer operational. However, the Abrahamic covenant is eternal. Those of you who have traveled to the Holy Land, Lee and his wife, you've been there, uh, Chris, a long time ago. Don't uh, turn at these guys. We, they have clothes on their back. Ask me if they, have, they are circumcised. Absolutely. And in Jewish people in the hospital where my wife was working, as soon as you have a baby child, if they are Jewish Orthodox, on the eighth day, the child is circumcised. Because they believe in both. But anyway, they have the right, even if they are Messianic, because it's a sign of Jewishness to circumcise their people under the Abrahamic covenant. And now you have the explanation as to why Paul did not circumcise Titus, but he did circumcise Tim. Not Tim Horton, but Timothy. Circumcised, uh, Tim Horton already circumcised, you roll at the rim, so. 
Sorry. Just so, uh, came to me right now because there is a cup there. <laughs> so Titus, both Titus' parents were Gentile? No. The mom was Jewish. I'm sorry, Titus. Can Titus, Greek. Full Greek. No Jewish blood. No. Oh, I see. Okay. No. On the, with Timothy g went with his mom. Yeah. He said, I want to be identified with my mother. So he wasn't circumcised at eight days, probably because his father was That's like, it. He was not eight days. He, 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 he came to Christ through Paul. Right. Okay? But Paul, notice what Paul never said. Even in Acts here. I felt compelled to, circ to circumcise Timothy that he might obey the law? No! He is an expert in Judaism and he circumcised Timothy because you won't teach Abrahamic covenant to Paul. He knows it. As far as the gents are concerned, no mention of it. And it, what's kind of fun, it's the Abrahamic covenant here. That's why he circumcised Timothy. Ask me if the law was given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Answer is no. The law came in Exodus chapter 20. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were long gone. Were they circumcised? Yes. Based on which covenant? The covenant made with Abraham. Now you have your explanation to this. I cannot do it better than I just did. And that's why I said to you, we'll do it later, we'll do it later. I'm coming there. Jewish issue. Here, it's not a Jewish issue. In Acts chapter 16, it is one. All right, where was I? The two covenants, I explained it, and so on. Verses 4 and 5, and then we pause for the break. Come, we have done only three verses in a session almost. But it's because you, you do it, I don't know if you share it. I, I'm not going to ask you if you share what you do here. You might. But sometimes people will say, yeah, but he circumcised Timothy. Now you know how to answer, theologically speaking. Paul is not contradicting himself a might. So if it does help you to, to embrace his teaching in a more solid way, my mission is accomplished is not to peep a person that lacks consistency. Four and five. But it was because of the false brethren secretly brought in who had sneaked in to spy out our liberty, circle liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus in order to bring us into bondage. But we did not yield in subjection to them for even an hour, circle an hour, so that the truth of the gospel would remain with you. After the private meeting of verse 2, now he went public. He had a public meeting. And now the public meeting, you have some Pharisees, most likely false brethren here. You can cross-reference that with Acts 15.5. They might, some of them might have been believer, but most likely false brethren, unbeliever. And in verse 4, privately brought in, it's a plant. P-L-A-N-T, a plant, it's a... Uh, do you have a synonym for plant, Debbie? You're good in English, usually. Uh, uh, something organized to, to, to... A false meeting, a plant, a conspiracy, or... Okay, to, good. That's it, yeah. To spy out, in Greek, it means to make a treacherous investigation. A plant. Treacherous investigation. That's the Greek word, to spy out. This is exactly like when we have false friends that they, pre they pretend to be your friends, but they work for the camp of the enemy. Uh, a treacherous. Do you know how to write treacherous? Yeah, a investigation to to discover the weak point. Mm -hmm. And we see that today. It is, you have some people that goes to church to church, and as soon as the meeting is over, they are the first one to run to the pastor. Did you really say that? Blah blah blah. 
to cause discord. We see that today. Yeah, but uh, did you really say, Francois, that I, had a, I was doing the men at the gate in the past, only men, when my, uh, my office was, uh, my classroom was uh, on Canada Building. And it was unbearable. Always the same person was coming just to destroy what was taught by implanting just a shadow of a doubt. Oh, do you think that this is a complete gospel? But turn there. Uh, we should be justified by works also. Go to James. Everything just twisted out outside of the context. I'm not talking about things that happened to me 2,000 years ago here. I've been doing that kind of ministry, the beloved, for 20 years. Not officially as TSM, but I taught in jail, different Bible studies in churches and stuff like that. And then I became an entity 12 years ago type of thing. I have seen these things and I make notes sometimes. Man, I remember these things quite sharply. For C... Uh, for see to, say, to, to, to have to bring in order to bring us into bondage, and the Greek it's to enslave completely, to enslave the person completely, and the Greek construction it means to enslave themselves too. The false teachers are enslaved. To all these things. There is no freedom there of communication. There is no submission either. They constantly go from place to place. They can't settle because they are constantly in disagreement with everything that is sound. So they are enslaved to unrighteousness, if you want to, as much as we were enslaved to sin in an unsafe state. That's the people that jump from place to place, always something bad to say. He's too loud, he preaches with notes, he uses no notes, he doesn't prepare, he has an accent, it's too long, the series that he do, name it. Verse 5, before we pause, we did not yield unto them uh, for an hour, simply put, for a short period of time. He never gave in, Paul. So that the truth of the gospel... Just go to verse 14 of chapter 1 here, where it says, it was a, uh, uh, no, it was verse 14 of chapter 2, but when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel. What is the truth of the gospel? You know it. Salvation by grace through faith alone plus nothing. Yes, we do works. Yes, we do works. Of course, it's, you're doing works right now. You're making notes and you're learning. I sure hope with the plan to, to teach it in Sunday school, whatever, name it. You're not doing it for the cause of justification. Like I said and I repeat, you cannot be more saved than you are now. His work is complete. It's reassuring. It's... Uh, Shoulders are suddenly a little bit more uh, loose, okay? Saved by grace to faint a load plus nothing. It's a key truth to this day. That's why this work that we do right now is incredible for you. So you can go right now to any churches. Go to Roman Catholic Church when you have friends that are. Hey, I'm going to go with you today. Go. I don't care the sermon. You, you will become kind of a, um, what is a bulletproof vest. He preached, it was good. But when he said this, no, you can go. Accompany your friends. Then if you, you go with them, they're going to come with you to this one day. Hey, buddy, why don't, you, why don't you try mine? Open the door to the Jehovah's Witness if you have warm muffin. Sit down, guys, for a moment. But when you're not anchored, what creeps in? Fear, and you close the door. Keep in mind the Galatians book is called the Charter of Liberty. Paul made no concessions to the Judaizer or the Pharisees. He was a Pharisee himself, so I think he knows what he's just talking about here. So the church, uh, the, the, the epistle of Galatians is good for all 
churches, coffee pots.